Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. We've got two dedications for our rundown today. Hypnoglance87. No, is this Victor from G4 TV? Yes, it's Victor from G4 TV. It was a long time ago on G4 now, uh, but thank you for watching. And Chester Eugene, I love Vic's interviews. He's just uh, a nice guy that loves the industry and the people that he gets to talk to, and that is absolutely true, and thank you for calling me a nice guy. We got you this rundown. Ubisoft isn't putting up with jerks in Rainbow Six Siege. The publisher has begun banning players who use hate speech in the online shooter. Over the weekend, players who use threatening language or use hateful racist, sexist, or ethnically offensive slurs were banned from the game for 30 minutes on the first offense, with the second and third offenses getting them banned for two hours. Players who get three strikes could be permanently banned, but only after an investigation by members of the Ubisoft team. The publisher hasn't said exactly how many players have been punished under the new rules, but there have been a vocal number of them complaining about it on social media. Ubisoft first revealed back in April that they were going to start combating hate speech in the game, saying that it has created a negative player experience and they're taking it very seriously. It remains to be seen if they'll implement similar policies in their other games. I just have to say bravo to Ubisoft. This is phenomenal. Listen, if this industry is going to expand and grow and bring more people in and be more inclusive uh, and be a much more friendly and engaging and satisfying experience for more people. Hate speech has got to be cut out. We've got to learn how to be civil with each other. We live these lives that are half in the real world and half online. And a big chunk of our online time is engaging with other players in video games. And we need to be you know, humans. We need to be polite citizens of this planet, and that's how you do it. You can get, you know, uh, into it, you can get fired up, but you don't need to be throwing hate speech back and forth. This is a fantastic move, Ubisoft, and I hope more game publishers follow suit with this. Very, very good stuff. Now, it looks like The Rock might not always be a surefire smash at the box office. The new action movie Skyscraper debuted over the weekend but flopped, earning just $25 million bucks domestically and coming in at number three behind Hotel Transylvania 3 and Ant-Man and the Wasp. This is well below the expectations of distributor Universal Pictures and means that Skyscraper is going to have to scrape the bottom of the barrel to earn back its $125 million budget, unless it does better in overseas markets. Since Skyscraper isn't part of an established franchise, the studio is banking primarily on the rock star power to win over audiences, which has worked in the past with other big films, but not this time. This isn't the first box office flop for The Rock, though. His last film, Rampage, also underperformed, as well as last year's comedy, Baywatch. But he's still seeing his share of hits, most notably the new Jumanji adventure. Listen, this guy is a superstar. He's a phenomenal uh, performer. I don't know if he's the best actor in the world. He's a solid, solid actor, but he's just a great personality. He is larger than life in real life and larger larger than life on screen. I think we can all kind of universally agree he's a magnetic individual that is fun to watch on screen, but he's got to get choosier with what he puts his name on. He's, he's all over the place. And I think that has affected Skyscraper to a degree, but I think anybody that watched any of the marketing around this movie said, well, that's Die Hard. That's, I've seen Die Hard. That's, that's just Die Hard and they put The Rock in there instead of Bruce Willis. People aren't stupid. That's exactly what the movie is and it's a forgettable Die Hard. And so the critic reviews were out there. Ours was out there for Film Fury and it's, it's just kind of an average forgettable movie that's trying to rip off a classic and it doesn't do it as well. The Rock isn't going to win anything with that, and the Rampage idea was just crazy. There are so many other video game concepts that are more sort of pertinent and timely than, you know, trying to bring an 80s arcade game that was pretty popular, but not that popular, and try to sort of bring that back up into a movie. Crazy, you know? And also it had to be kind of kid-friendly because it couldn't get too, you know, too violent and crazy. The effects were okay in that movie, but yeah, another too forgettable movies it's not so much that the rock is oversaturated he just has to pick better things because the guy is great we will watch him we'll watch him and i mean we're watching him in ballers on hbo all the time but we will watch him in movies all the time if there are good movies now stranger things is known for its 80s nostalgia and its next season is taking on the worst thing about the 80s mindless consumerism the first teaser video for stranger things season three has arrived it's a comical promo video for a fictional shopping mall that is open in the film setting of hawkins indiana it even features one of the show's characters steve played by joe keery working at an ice cream shop alongside a new character robin played by 
actress Maya Hawke. The fact that this is the first footage released from the new season implies that a lot of the story will unfold in or around this shopping mall, which opens up loads of potential for comedy, corporate satire, and of course, product placement. The teaser ends with the words, coming next summer, which indicates that the new season will premiere in summer 2019. I love this show. It really is a throwback. Um, you know, they escalated to some crazy science fiction fantasy stuff with season two. I'm very excited to, you know, where they're gonna take us in season three. It's interesting that they're going into a shopping mall that brings up the uh, the Dead Rising franchise for me right away. Maybe we're gonna see some, some zombies in there. I also had this flash of uh, Phoebe Cates all of a sudden just popped into my head. I, f I feel like they should cast her in some kind of a role for this new season. Um, they're on fire with Stranger Things. I cannot wait. Netflix, just make sure it is great, okay? The big screen Uncharted movie is likely still years away, but here's something else to dig up in the meantime. A 15-minute Uncharted fan film has dropped online featuring Firefly star Nathan Fillion as the iconic treasure hunter Nathan Drake. He doesn't raid any tombs in the short, but he does take on gangsters in a bid to track down a map to lost treasure. The cast also includes Avatar villain Stephen Lang as Drake's mentor Sully, and if nothing else, the short confirms everyone's suspicions that Nathan Fillion really looks and sounds like Drake from the video games. I think you have me confused with somebody else, pal. Fillion probably won't be appearing in the big screen Uncharted movie, though. That's already set to star Spider-Man Tom Holland as a younger version of the character. Now, you see, this is uh, crazy. Sony has had this opportunity to bring Nathan Fillion uh, out from his TV work. He's done some good work with TV, but this guy is so eager to play this character, he does it for a fan film, and it's probably because the window's kind of closing for him to kind of be this action guy, but he pulls it off. He's good in this, and it's like, Sony, this is like being handed to you uh, on a silver platter. This is a guy that not only fits the role and we all want to see him be Nathan Drake, he's willing to do it for nothing. He's willing to do it just as an exercise and he's great in this little sequence here. It really is perfectly cast and the Stephen Lang as Victor Sullivan was a... I, I just ingenious casting, just perfect. When the, he kind of takes down his binoculars and you see who it is, he is absolutely outstanding and he seals the deal. It's totally worth watching. You can tell it's done on the cheap and it doesn't have all the big budget stuff, doesn't have the huge sort of exotic set pieces or anything like that, but it's still really fun and charming. And you can see that these, these two actors could play brilliantly off of each other and something could be done. And I, my question to Sony is, Look, I know you want to build this huge Uncharted kind of theme park universe for us, but why don't you just make a, a good movie with good actors that are competent that we can really get behind, build a couple of them, possibly, if it does well, which I assume it would, and then you can cast younger later and then sort of flesh out your Uncharted thing. Why shoot for, you know, the moon and give Tom Holland, who's a great actor, but it's just like, you know, here's another fantastic piece of opportunity for you, Tom Holland. We'll just put you in everything because you're the hot thing right now. Why play it that way? Why not just focus on building the best Uncharted movie that you can with actors that have tons and tons of chops like these two? Uh, I, I would be so psyched for that. I, I'm still psyched for Tom Holland as a younger Nathan Drake, don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, man, I would love to see a Nathan Fillion feature film. And maybe this is the catalyst. Maybe this is Nathan Fillion and his team saying, uh, look, you're passing up an incredible opportunity and it's taking so damn long. I mean, they feel like the Uncharted games are kind of winding down, like Naughty Dog's basically saying, okay, that was great, we had a good run. You know, let's turn it into like the Rampage thing where we get the Uncharted movie 20 years too late. You know what I'm saying? All right, big things have small beginnings, and sometimes even the smallest mistake can ruin an entire game. Modders have discovered that a single typo in one line of code managed to cripple the critically panned 2013 shooter Aliens Colonial Marines. Modder James Dickinson 963, who's part of the ModDB.com community, found that one line of code regarding the game's enemy AI misspells the word tether with an A, which leaves the line of code invalid. Changing it to the correct spelling makes the line of code active and completely changes the enemy behavior behavior for the better, with the aliens actually attacking the player like they're supposed to, rather than just wandering around like they did when the game launched. The fact that such a simple problem went unnoticed by the dev team speaks to the problems with the game, and the improved AI, of course, doesn't fix all of the other problems like substandard graphics and repetitive gameplay. I mean, this was a game that I think was just like, all right, just get it out the door. There was so there must have been so much hostility and anger and confusion and frustration behind the scenes. 
and they knew they had a stinker. They just were like, they wrote it off and they just sent it out and, and uh, tried to recoup what they could off of the brand. And uh, you know, th this is what happens is you tarnish an incredible opportunity, an incredible brand, you know, and there's still, there's been some okay Aliens games in the past, but there still hasn't been that definitive one, you know? And this could have been an opportunity. I think the closest we've come to that is probably Alien Isolation, but there still could be something really incredible that's more akin to James Cameron's take, which is what this was supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, very, very lame. And, um, you know, it speaks to the lack of communication and it speaks to the frustration of uh, you know, developers when they're kind of faced with crushing deadlines or, uh, you know, having to sort of get their work done under the constraints of a license holder that maybe doesn't have the patience or the, the you know, the, the uh, or maybe they've lost hope in a project. Lots of pressure and there it is bubbling up and uh, good on you, uh, James Dickinson 963 for finding that. Very interesting story. One of Britain's biggest filmmakers is taking on one of Britain's biggest comic books. Moon, Source Code, and Warcraft movie director Duncan Jones is making a movie based on the British comic book series Rogue Trooper. Jones posted a short and cryptic video on Twitter yesterday hinting that it was happening, and this morning he officially confirmed that he's working on an adaptation. More details on the film will be announced at the San Diego Comic Con, which kicks off this weekend. Rogue Trooper first hit comic shelves in 1981 and focuses on a blue-skinned, genetically engineered super soldier in the future caught in a battle between rival human factions. The first Rogue Trooper stories were published as part of the 2000 AD comic series, the same books that initially ran Judge Dredd, and since then they've been spun off into their own comic series. There have also been several adaptations in other media, including a handful of video games, but there's never been a big screen movie based on the franchise until now. Now, I've played the Rogue Trooper video game that Rebellion made, and I thought it was all right. It's pretty cool, and they recently redid it all for the modern consoles. That's my only real exposure to Rogue Trooper, but I love Duncan Jones. I think the guy is a, a very cool filmmaker. I wasn't so enthused with his uh, recent Netflix show or his movie that he made for Netflix uh, and Warcraft left a lot to be desired but I love the heart that was in Warcraft it's just a zany over-the-top crazy experience so there's charm in there but I loved Moon and I loved Source Code and uh, I just think this guy's a really smart savvy filmmaker that um, has a geek streak and uh, you know sort of bleeds this stuff and loves this stuff loves video games obviously loves comic books as well so I'm excited to see what he does with this Rogue Trooper it's definitely going to be something where he's uh, uh, you know I, I think educating an audience out there I don't know if everybody in the world is super familiar with Rogue Trooper but it can still work and uh, excited to see Judge Dredd on screens again soon too and before we go, the first poster has surfaced for DC's big screen Aquaman movie. The film stars Jason Momoa reprising his role from last year's Justice League and is directed by James Wan, who's best known for horror movies like Insidious and The Conjuring. Judging by the poster, the film will have a much brighter splash of color than some of the other DC movies. The first trailer for Aquaman is expected to debut at Comic-Con. Are you guys excited for this? I'm kind of curious to see how this one plays out. It's kind of crazy to me because, you know, Entourage uh, spent like seasons making fun of the idea that James Cameron was going to make an Aquaman movie. And Momoa was pretty charming in the Justice League film. And I, I you know, I reviewed it uh, on Blu-ray after seeing it a second time earlier this, this year. And I actually thought it was pretty fun. Um, but it was definitely uneven and it definitely clunky and cumbersome but you can see those actors are capable of gelling and putting some pretty cool stuff together uh, Aquaman really was a fish out of water in that movie though he really didn't do much in the water so it's going to be uh, very cool to see what they're doing for water effects and how they're going to sell all of that stuff and whether we're going to believe all of it it's, he's an interesting character just this idea that he's half human and half Atlantean and he's, he becomes the king King and uh, he has to kind of deal with all of the Game of Thronesy and turmoil and the you know behind the scenes sabotages that are going to happen and he's not going to feel quite at home in Atlantis and not quite at home on Earth. I, I'm I'm curious. I'm absolutely curious to see how this goes. And I like James Wan. I think he's a a very very fun film director. And I know that he's had a good time with this. I know he's very proud of this. The poster's kind of crazy. Um, and Momoa again, another larger than life personality that just needs some good projects to kind of uh, you know shine a light on this guy in the proper context. And hopefully Aquaman turns out to be the case. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for our rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new EP live 
live for you. So make sure you come back for that. In the meantime, click around and check some of the other content that we've been making. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell. And if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too. We'll see you tomorrow. Play forever. <laughs>